All right. Yeah. What up, guys? Uh, VAU podcast episode four. We got uh, Mr. Christopher Sincere. What's going on, dude? Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> Not too much, bro. Um, I'm glad to have you. Um, again, like I was telling you before we started recording, I uh, I'm, I'm a definitely a fan of what you're doing. Um, I've been listening to your stuff for a minute. My favorite song is probably Ron Weasley. Uh, yeah, bro. I've been yeah, just you know, not only do I like your music, but I, I love your your message too. You know, like you you do a lot of talking content too, which is like very necessary. Like there's dialogue needed in the Christian space, especially. So I'm super glad that, you know, you bring that to the table, man. Um, how are you doing today, bro? Man, I'm, I'm doing really good, man. I'm doing really good. Um, obviously the EP is, is out today, bro. So, um, just been kind of, there's a lot of work leading up to it. So to just see kind of the success that, uh, it's seeing how we, you know, we're peaked at number, uh, three on iTunes on the Christian charts, bro. So, um, you know, I've obviously we're like super geek, me and Casey about that. So, um, it's a good day, man. I'm going to have a game night with my friends tonight, play some, uh, Stranger Things Monopoly and <laughs> just, uh, watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3, man. So it's, it's a good day. <laughs> Love it, bro. Dude, congrats on the EP, man. That's amazing. Like you said, number three. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not sure if we're number three right now, but I know you were this morning. I, I got the screenshot crazy what? bro crazy out of all the christian music in the world like you hit number three that's wild so it's, yeah it, it's and it's wild because you know my only other time being in the top you know top three projects was on when i was uh on next move when we dropped our rep back then um and so but doing it independent like not being on a label you know was 100% funded by just Casey, which was, uh, you know, it, it makes it all the more special as especially he's one of my best friends, man. So like doing it with him together and uh, it's, yeah, it's a blessing, bro. It's, I love it. That's so dope, bro. Do you, you live in Orlando, right? Yes, sir. Yep. D does Casey live in Orlando too? He lives in Atlanta, actually. Um, oh, okay. He drove down here. We, uh, we literally wrote and recorded the entire EP in six hours. Um, and so here's how it went, man. If, if I could share real quick, I know we want to get probably into the interview, but. Um, no, nah, go ahead. So, man. dude, he, he, uh, he drove down here, right? And our plan was, because he had to leave early Monday morning. Uh, he came down here on a Friday. We had to leave early Monday. Uh, my Sabbath, I really uh, like to protect. You know, I, I don't like doing any work. I don't like answering anybody or responding to, you know, I delete social media on Sundays. And so we only really had two days of work, Friday and Saturday, and he left early Monday morning. So he got here Friday. Uh, we drive out to Kissimmee, which is like probably um, maybe like a 30, 40 minute drive from where I'm at here in Orlando. Um, and we go to record and we just end up going out to dinner and just like hanging out with our friends and we didn't start recording till like 10 PM bro, like writing and recording. And so, but we were like, we have to finish this thing tonight. So we didn't, yeah, we didn't finish till like four or five in the morning or something like that, bro. Crazy, crazy. Um, so let me ask you this about your process. When, when you're making music, do you, do you do the whole like freestyle first and then write to it? Or are you more of like a writer and then just record traditionally? It depends, bro. Like it really, it really depends. Most of the time I'll get an idea for the flow. I would, I won't even like freestyle. I'll kind of just get on the D and just flow with some like cadences, like whatever, whatever that's like. I might flow with some cadences um, and try even different, like um, just like dialects in my tone, whether I'm in, like ending on a different vowel sound with the same flow. I just see what, what sounds good coming out the mouth and then I'll write or bro, like uh, with the broken melody song, the song we made at the pornography joint, um, bro, that song, we didn't, 
we didn't do any like of our traditional writing style. It literally just came from my heart. We, I just, I literally, I was writing it down in my notebook, bro. And yeah. it just came. I made like maybe two or three revisions to the verse, but um, they were like small revisions and it just came like that, bro. We wrote that entire song really quickly, um, you know, cause it's coming from personal experience. It's not like we're trying to make a hit or anything. We're just writing about our life, you know? So it depends, bro. Sometimes it's like, it'll be those quick, like, uh, songs that like just come super easily. Uh, sometimes it takes a lot longer, but yeah. Bro. Yeah. Those are usually the best ones, you know, when, when you're just sitting there and you just feel God's presence and you're just connecting as an artist, connecting to God and letting him put the ideas into our soul and just putting them through the microphone. Those are usually the yeah. best songs, man. I had an experience like that a couple of weeks ago. I, I was uh one of my friends Chris his name's Chris too um awesome. he was like uh, yeah he was like dude you gotta just put you gotta put your heart and your experiences into a song stop trying to make a hit stop like freestyling just like literally sit there and just make something about your life and I did and it was one of my best songs it, it's not out yet but um I can definitely relate to that you know that that's definitely a great feeling bro so yeah, bro. I mean, the pornography joint, like you were mentioning, then I'm one of the people who struggled with that my whole life too, you know? Yeah. And I think more Christians need to talk about it because it's such a sensitive topic. Like it, it can be embarrassing or it can be, you know, it can be, you know, people get insecure when they talk about, you know, their, their vices, but, um, yeah, I just think it's important to just continue to keep the dialogue going to let other Christians know that, A, you're not alone. You're not alone yeah. when you're going through these struggles because and and B, people that you look up to still have these struggles, too. Like, I'm sure you have a lot of people that look up to you in your fan base. I know you just you came up like a few thousand followers recently, too. Right. Yeah, bro. Yeah. A lot of those people, they see you being successful on social media and you letting down the the curtain and showing them like, look, I really struggle with this in real life, or I've struggled with this in the past, and I'm still getting through it. Dude, that's literally doing God's work. You're encouraging people who, who look up to you to just like, you, you're, 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 dude, you could be potentially preventing suicides. You know what I mean? Like people out here, just seeing your work and seeing, hearing your message. Yeah, bro. So just keep doing that, man. Right on. Amen, bro yeah yeah you know I feel, I feel like a bunch of artists are like are like uh like the like the wizard of oz bro they like try to like make themselves be this whole like oh i'm oz look at me i'm this big old thing and then you pull back the curtain and it's just some it's just like any other regular guy bro you know um and i think we just we don't like to we don't like to look weak bro because you know um it like attacks our ego and it attacks our pride to look weak. And it's like, yeah, I, I've never really, maybe like early on in my walk, but especially in recent years, man, I really stopped caring about what people think about me, bro. Like, you know, if I put this video out and the one that went viral, I was talking about pornography. If people want to label me the pornography guy or call me weird for making this, I don't freaking care, bro. Like the song is, is helping the people that it's supposed to help. And when I look in, when I look in scripture, bro, I don't see the apostle Paul um, trying to, you know, portray himself as this super strong person. What I see him pen is, is uh, verses like, man, I'm in, I'm in prison right now. Cause y'all send me a blanket. Cause I'm cold. He's right. He would write to the church. Y'all send me a blanket. I'm cold right now, man. Um, or he would say, you know, he would say things like, uh, the things that I want to do, I don't. The things that I don't want to do, I, I, I do end up doing. Um, we see this wrestle that he has with his flesh, bro. He talks about how the Lord put a thorn in his side. And, like we, we, we talk, he talks, or we uh, learn about how the various times that he was stoned or beaten or in prison or the times he was shipwrecked or the time he was bitten by the snake. Like we don't look at Paul's life and see, oh, this guy is just this perfectly strong person. We see a human who is just doing his best to follow Christ, um, and I want to I want to try to emulate that as well, man. So, yeah, yeah, bro. 
that's that's gold man that's that's a real gem um where did you where did you learn about the bible like did you just read it yourself and like self-taught or did you go to like groups at church or like how did you get your the- theological on point yeah um i didn't grow up in church bro actually um and my dad wasn't in my life growing up like i you know i still don't know him i met him a couple times in my life but um you know i he was never around i didn't really have the best influences we you know in my house we um it was always like weed in the house and drinking and stuff going on like that just is was the norm um and every now and then i would visit my grandma and she would take us to church um and in those few times i always knew that if from the time i was a kid bro i always knew that the lord was calling me and i and i always knew that he had great things for my life you know and um you know it wasn't until my my grandfather passed away in in uh july 2013 um you know, I saw he passed away from cancer. I saw him take his last breath, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I was, I'm gonna die one day." Yeah, I was 13 years old. I was like, "I'm gonna, yeah, there's, like, I'm gonna be just like him one day, whether it's from cancer, whether it's from a car accident, like it doesn't matter. There's gonna be a day in which I have to face that reality." And so I started taking my walk a lot more serious. It still took me a while, but um, yeah, it really was just me just getting into God's word myself, bro. You know. Like I didn't really have, like I said, parents or anything. And, but it just was, um, obviously my community at the church that I was attending and I had my uncle who's like, a, you know, still a mentor, a father figure to me, but, um, on a day-to-day basis, bro, for a couple of years, it just was, was me and God, like, you know, and me reading like commentaries and watching commentaries on YouTube and, um, you know, just really like, trying to get an understanding for um, not just like this Christianity that I have like motivational talks, but really understanding the Bible, you know? So yeah, man. Dude, that's awesome. Wow. You really took initiative then. And you really like, you took it upon your own hands to, to, to work out your own salvation, you know? Yeah. 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 So yeah, dude, that's awesome. I'm, um, I can relate to that too. You know, like I grew up in my household, like, you know, I had my dad and my mom, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of fighting. Um, and I was actually the reason for a lot of it. <clears throat> um, and yeah, dude, it, it was just, it was just one of those things to where, you know, it kind of affected me. Like I, I used to be depressed. I used to have a lot of anxiety. You should be very, very depressed. And, um, I would take it out on anger to the people that would that were my loved ones at school. I was like the nicest kid ever. Cause those were strangers. And I, I didn't, I felt like, yo, like I, I couldn't take out my anger at school. Like, but I would always lash out at my loved ones. <clears throat> and then, I mean, um, yeah. and then, um, you know, as I grew, I, I moved to Florida. I'm originally from Connecticut. So I moved to oh. Florida. Yeah. I moved to Florida about seven years ago, eight years ago. And um, once what, I moved, what was that? What part of Florida are you in? I live in uh, Palm Bay. Oh, sick. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you're good, bro. You're actually coming to Palm Bay pretty soon. Or Melbourne, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm going to try to pull up to that, too. Anybody watching this, if it's before, what's the date? Uh, The 13th, August 13th. August 13th. If anybody's watching this before August 13th, pull up to Christopher Sincere in Melbourne um but yeah bro oh yeah so i moved i moved to florida and my relationship with my parents got so much better because we didn't see each other as much um and then the time we did see each other we had no time to argue like it was just all about just catching up and just like all love so you know anybody who who's struggling with their parents and or has arguments or feels depressed and it's just like feel like there's a toxic environment in your family like maybe step away for a little bit you know and then just, just kind of see, just kind of see what that does for the dynamic. But yeah, bro, it's really cool that you took your salvation into your own hands and you got in the Bible yourself. Um, you know, that's something I'm working on. I'm, st- I, I, I kind of feel like I'm still like a, a toddler Christian in a sense, 
like I'm still I, like I haven't read the whole Bible. Um, I've read bits and pieces. I've been a, a lot in Proverbs lately, but uh, but yeah, man. So, so let me ask you this, Chris. Why uh, why Christian music? Like, what what brought you to? I know, I know, you know, you wanted to work out your own salvation. So, you know, when you face a reality of dying one day, you go to heaven and you have eternal life with the King of Kings. But what, what, what brought that into the music side of things? Yeah, man. Uh, great question. So, um, you know, I, I got, I got songs that I've written uh, or even some songs that I've released that like, you know, don't talk about the Lord. I got some like love songs out there. And, you know, I wrote a song for my girlfriend and stuff like that. And so yeah, like, I, don't, I don't have a problem with um, making songs that are not like explicitly Christian. I actually want to venture more into that. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Um, I actually want to venture a little bit more into that, that kind of like, um, it sounds so bad, but I don't want to say like this, like non Christ centered, you making this non Christ centered music, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you make um, a love song, you're loving your your girl like like Christ would love her. So it's still about love. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that secular music. Uh, I don't think that all secular music is is bad. Obviously, there's a ton of trash out there, but um, but anyway. So to answer your question, why Christian music? Um, I think it's impactful, bro. I think of when I was in you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, especially 10th grade, bro, going back and listening to like, you know, Heroes for Sale by Andy Mineo. And um, let's see, 10th grade, I was, it was, uh, it was uh, 2015 for me. So yeah, Heroes for Sale had been a couple years old, but it was like, it was like Heroes for Sale, Uncomfortable had just came out when I was a sophomore by Andy Mineo um anomaly by lecrae you know um tomorrow we live by kb like out oh, man what bro those were like <laughs> you know like I, I first got saved and i was like wow this music is so helpful you know um because i'm just i'm just a young man trying to like i don't i don't have like a father figure and uh watching like lecrae and ad minio and kb and all these other guys watching their interviews I'd be like, man, these these dudes seem like really solid men. Like not even just artists, they just they seem like really solid like men and husbands. And you know, um, in the craze case at the time, this is before KB started having kids, but in the craze case, I was like, yo, the craze seems like a great father, even just the way he speaks about his children. And um, I was like, I want to be that for other people, you know. Um, because I know that there are people out there that are just like me you know, um, who don't have the best family background, who didn't grow up in the most religious home. Um, and hip hop is like their language. I want to be, I want to speak to people in their language, bro, you know, um, and, and help people exactly where it is that they're at. So that's why I chose Christian, Christian rap. And I continue to choose to do so, man. So fire, bro. So fire. You got the, uh, you got the, what do they call it? You got the drip too. You got the, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, like that's something that uh, I guess looking cool helps you influence even more because you are speaking their language. Um, bro, I'd be wearing Crocs with no socks and like an old pajama t-shirt every day. <laughs> man, but uh, that's so cool, man. That's so cool. Um who else do you who else do you like look up to like are there any pastors or like motivational speakers like the Eric Thomases of the world or like who else do you kind of look up to Eric Thomas I love him bro um as much as as much flack as people want to give this guy I love I've always loved Carl Lentz um okay. it, you know obviously he had his his fallout and his controversy or whatever but um that doesn't mean that anything he was speaking was any less true you know, uh, just, just cause he fell. So I always have been impacted just by the way he leads and, um, you know, uh, even just like his approach to influencing culture, I thought was just brilliant. I, I'm looking at his book right here. I got, uh, his book on the moment, but, um, yeah, man, he's like, he's one of the goats, bro. In my opinion, 
when it comes to just pastors who influ who can be an influence to people. So I love Carl, uh, Charles Metcalf from Transformation Church. Um, he's a creative pastor over there, or he might have moved up in his position. I don't know, but Charles Metcalf is fire, bro. Um, okay. But yeah, honestly, bro, like I'm I, obviously Kanye West is like my biggest, my favorite, most favorite artist of all time. Um, wow. But other than that, um, you know, I, I don't really like look at people and be like, oh man, like I really, really, I'm obviously, I love Machine Gun Kelly. I love, um, you know, the guys I mentioned earlier, KB and people like that. Um, I love Post Malone. Um, those are probably the artists that I look up to the most. And other than that, bro, I just, bro, I just be living, bro. I'm like, I don't know. I just like to, I, re I get really inspired by film, you know, by, by movies. And um, I take the, I take what I learn in movies and I go and live my life like that, as opposed to like, you know, taking the words from like a pastor or something. Like I, I look at like Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire and I, I'm like, I'm like, this is a way deeper sermon than like most pastors that I've heard preach. This movie is a way deeper sermon. This is great. But, That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's like, I I've watched movies before and I walk out and I feel like I'm the main character now. And I'm just like, yo, this is me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah. Eric Thomas, bro. He's been like another father figure to me. Like that dude. I watch his, his APOC ministries channel. He started a church in Michigan and he gives sermons like every Sunday or every Saturday, or every Sunday. But yeah, they're so fire, bro. Like they're so relatable. They're so motivational. Um, have you heard of Miles Monroe? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, man. What are your thoughts on Miles Monroe? Because I know people have a lot of mixed opinions on him. Not that we're here to talk about other people, but just just curious. Yeah. Um, so from a from a motivational standpoint, I think I think Miles is is dope. Um what I want him to be my pastor, probably probably not. Um but that that's just me personally. Like I, um, I love the pastor at my church, um, um, Pastor Mike Adkins over here in Or in Orlando at a church called Grace Church. Uh, I just love the way he breaks down the scriptures. And like when I go to church on a Sunday morning, um, he does a great job at teaching and dissecting and and breaking the word down. Um, you know, I could go to like Eric Thomas if I wanted like a super motivational you know, message, but, um, yeah, per personally, I, you know, I think Miles Monroe is a, is a great guy, man. I think he's, don't get me wrong. He's a great guy. He's a great leader. I know a lot of people look up to him and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think he's teaching like false stuff or anything. Um, it's just not my personal cup of tea, but yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. From what I've heard about him, like people say like, Oh, it's prosperity gospel. But like in, in the truth, like, I think he's a great leader too. And I think, you know, his messages have a lot of truth to it too. Um, bro, did you play sports growing up or like, were you, or were you just always into like art and stuff? I played basketball. Yeah. All right. I always, I always used to feel like Troy Bolton, bro. High school musical. <laughs> like just I used bust to out in song mid, mid layup. <laughs> bro, mid layup. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, and high school musical, I always loved. I still do love it to this day. I might watch it after I get off the interview. But um, like, I, I always felt like Troy Bolton because I'd be like, you know, the basketball player one moment, and then the next moment I'd be over here like writing and trying to make music and stuff. So uh, that always was like, they were both passions of mine growing up. So you played in high school too. Um, I wish I played in high school. I, I mean, I didn't play like on the high school team. I, I was I played high school. I guy got cut from the team. I wasn't I wasn't big enough, man. I was a skinny kid. So. Oh shoot, shoot. But, yeah, but it is, it is what it is. I was hurt at the moment, but it's you know it's fine, bro. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm doing what I'm doing now. But um, yeah, I played I played in middle school, but I just kind of played for fun, and I'd go to recreation centers and stuff like that throughout high school, but um yeah bro that's cool man bro michael jordan got cut from his from his high school team isn't that crazy isn't that crazy yeah yeah i yeah, was just watching it 
documentary the other day with my girlfriend and bro we were sobbing bro is we, we literally cried like three times man watching the documentary because we were like yo this dude got every freaking obstacle against him and look at him now he's like you know arguably one of the greatest point guards of all time greatest shooter of all time i think without the debate so yeah man yes yeah. but how long have you and your girl been together uh like a year and three months right now man congratulations bro uh, yes sir i love it bro if you see these uh these girls back here this is all this is all her bro this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's cool man feminine touch on your room is uh it's always key <clears throat> i uh me and my girl been together like eight years now and i still haven't proposed <laughs> um um i'm due though bro i i just want to do it right you know, like, I just want to make sure we have all our T's crossed and I's dotted before, you know, before we make that, that decision. Um, That's smart. I definitely think she's the one, but right now we're, we're just, we're just working some things out to like, make sure like we're stable and steady. Like our church has this, uh, this marriage training coming up on, it's called Calvary Chapel is our church in Melbourne. Um, and it has this marriage training coming up. Uh, I think it's on like the 18th that we're going to go to that and just, just get knowledge, just invest into our relationship. So. Yeah, man, that's so key, bro. I'm telling you, I can't tell. That's something I'm like, I wasn't like really passionate about before, but I definitely am passionate about it now. Um, That exact idea of like, man, we want to make sure that we are, set before going into this thing Amen. um you know if, if if i had it my way bro man i would have i would have been proposed you know but um i i want to make sure that and we want to make sure that across all angles um and character and this is more so me but just character finances the way i handle uh situations as they come i want to make sure that i have those things down um because there's a lot of people that get married and they are they don't have those things down and it hurts them in the long run so you you doing this right now and kind of getting right beforehand it might be discouraging or it might suck at times but i promise you bro it's, it's saving you in the long run man it's saving yeah. you in the long run. 100 um, percent, bro divorce rates are what like like 40 percent like divorce bro, rates 50 bro yeah 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 man. so we both have wounds from our past that we need to heal before we tie the knot because we don't want to share that trauma. You know what I mean? Like we just got to heal individually so we can be two complete people coming together to make 200% instead of 50, 50, trying to make 100% of a person, Love you know? It. Love it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you got that on your shoulders. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So do you, bro. Um, Thank you. Bro, there was this one clip that you had. All right, I'm gonna go into this. So you you had this one clip um a while ago where you were performing and then you just like broke down and and you yeah. kind of you start dude, that was one of my favorite clips that I've ever seen of like a of like a performance because it was just so real and so raw. Like, can you tell me a little bit about like what was what was going on there? Yeah, man. Um so yeah, that was from a that was from a song I have called Glory, um, off my EP The Middle. And it was just like a prayer that I kind of wrote into rhyme form, um, that song. And, uh, man, I, I had, um, I had a line in there where I say, I say back up off my sister, back up off my mother. I'm like, you know, uh, talking to the devil and I'm like, yo, like back up for my family, man. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, my mom, my sister, they're not, they're not saved, bro. We live completely different lifestyles, you know? Um, and that comes with its own challenges sometimes, man. It gets, it gets really frustrating, uh, at times, uh, cause you, you know, you being on the other side of it, being a Christian following the Lord, you see the peace that comes with it. It's not that all my problems go away, um, or anything, but you, you see the peace that comes with following Jesus. You see, um, the change of heart, the way that you're able to have compassion and not walk around with like hurt and baggage and stuff. Right. And so when you see that on other people, it can get really frustrating, man. And um, my 
thing that I've wrestled with a lot, bro, is um, being used by God to impact so many people, bro, thousands of people around the world. But like my own family isn't saved, bro. You know, that that's that's tough, man. So that clip, I just it was just a kind of a culmination of all that I was thinking about. It. I was like, okay, yeah, I, I really want to see my family saved, bro. You know, um, and so yeah, man, that's like a big prayer of mine, bro. I'll, I'll definitely, you know, after this, I'll say a prayer and um, I'll say a prayer for your family, bro, for real. It means um, a lot, bro. Yeah, that's um, it's like some superhero stuff, bro. Like, you're you're like this superhero, but you have your kryptonite, you know, of your, your own family, you know, yeah. like, you're like a, like a real life superhero, bro. It's pretty cool. But I know, I know how hard that can be. Um, yeah, I definitely know how hard that can be. Like my dad just rededicated his life to Christ at church at the altar a few weeks ago. And awesome. yeah, I was like, I was like, wow. So, cause for the longest time I used to be Catholic um used to be catholic transition into christian when i when, when i just i just i just started going to a christian church and i was like i really resonated with the messaging i really resonated with like like how things were delivered it, it didn't feel like idolatry of anything other than jesus christ um and that that was where you know i was like yeah this christian lifestyle is for me 100 my name is actually christian so kind of kind of works out yeah heck yeah <laughs> yeah bro oh uh, uh, yeah it, it definitely is on some superhero stuff man i feel like because you know going back to i, I mentioned spider-man 2 earlier toby mcguire is one of my favorite movies of all time bro um because yeah. bro like from the surface you just see spider-man fighting dr octopus it's like you know uh dr octopus has this like whatever uh like sun being the power to send the palm my hand he's trying to like you know yeah new york city um what i what i see bro is something way deeper than that in that movie man i see i see a minister a man of god who can't balance um real life and ministry and so he quits ministry um that entire because remember bro you know you know you would know a movie i'm talking about you seen it I do. I've seen bits and pieces. I don't remember all of it, but I know like I've definitely I've seen Spider-Man one. So, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Check it out when you get the chance, man, because you, you start seeing Peter Parker. He's like missing his like school assignments in college. And, you know, Mary Jane is his the girl he likes is about to go get married because he's never showing up for any of her plays and stuff because he has Spider-Man stuff to take care of. And um because of all of his because of all of the peter parker stuff there's this like in like this super famous scene where he uh takes the spider-man suit and he just throws it in the trash and he walks away you know and he's like i'm not doing this crap no more you know yeah. and life was good life was good for him for about two weeks you know and then then it was like okay you can't you really can't run from this call you're supposed to be spider-man you got to be spider-man and you just got to learn how to balance peter parker and spider-man and so that's that's kind of that's kind of me when it comes to family and stuff bro not even just family a bunch of things in my life there are times i want to be quitting bro there are times that i want to like you know give up throwing a towel but you can't just do that when you're uh you're called to be great bro you know yeah um, so get yeah. that bro so get that so i assume toby's your favorite spider-man actor um Ah oh, man, I think Toby has the best movies. I yeah. think Andrew is the best Spider Man. So do I. Exactly. Yep. Same same thing here, man. Andrew Garfield crushed it. Um, and he, bro, like he's always getting the short end of the stick out of all three of them. Yeah, you you saw the newest one where all three of them are in it, right? Of course, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fire movie. That was a fire movie. Yeah. Did you see the other one about Miles Morales? Yep. yep. That was a good one too. My girlfriend took me out to that. I was like, I was like, are we really gonna go watch like a cartoon movie? And she's like, trust me. So I just went into it. I was like, dude, this is fire. Bro, my girlfriend and I, we went to watch part one because she had never seen part one. 
Um, and so we watched, we just watched the second one when it came out and I didn't even know it was going to be like a two part movie. So when it ended, I was like, I was mad because I was like, what just happened? Yeah. There's yeah. No worst but ending, I, worst ending. Yeah, bro. How are you going to leave us on a cliffhanger like that? But no, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the, uh, for the ending, you know, of that I think it's going to be really sick, bro. Those are yeah. great movies, man. Fire. So fire. Um, yeah, bro. So kind of like to the next thing, like, so next move, you know, you had an, a, a real era, you guys made a good run. Um, you know, what, what went into that? Like, how did that get started? And then, and then why did it, you know, if, if you can share, why did it end? Yeah, bro. It was, uh, it was like the assembling of the Avengers, bro. Like <laughs> you can tell I love superheroes, man. But, yeah. um, Bro, it was like the it was like it was like Avengers Assemble, bro. Because, um, you know, uh, Coop at the time was in um, Oklahoma, I believe. Henrik was in uh, Jersey, um, and me, I'm in Orlando, Florida. Three completely different, you know, backgrounds, cultures, and stuff. Um, so YB, who was uh, the owner of of Next Move, he kind of was the the head of it all. Um, I had met him when I was like six, 17, bro. And I just started like doing music locally here in Orlando. He would be at like open mics with me and stuff. We both were like, he was a little bit further along than I was, but we both were like new to this thing, you know? Um, and then like years later, bro, he just, bro, he came to me. They came to, uh, Henrik, they came to Coop. And they quickly became, I, and I, I wasn't even expecting this at first, but they quickly became some of my best friends still to this day, bro. You know, that's awesome, bro. Talk, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, man. I just was texting uh, Henrik this morning. Um, uh, and we just were like telling each other, you know, how proud we are of one another and stuff. It was just a super wholesome conversation. Um, yeah, that's wow. my boy. But, um, as far as the ending, man, I don't, I don't know how much I can like get into, bro. But yeah, just whatever, whatever you're comfortable sharing, bro. Like again, like I don't want to dive too deep if you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, um, because you know, there's, there's like, man, there's like the stuff that I've heard, and then there's like the stuff that was told to us, you know, um, and it it did kind of leave a little a little sting, uh, in, in my heart personally. Uh, and I think also and Henrik and Coop, just the way things ended, um, kind of sucked. I wish that it would have gone a little differently. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's no bad blood, man. And I, I still got love for, uh, for YB and I still got love for the team. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. Um, I think they just wanted to, you know, have his return to a like state of freedom as artists and, um, be able to have our masters back. And, um, yeah, man, that's like the most I could, I could say without, I don't want to get into like sharing people's stuff without having their consent or anything. So I get it, bro. I get it. That was a great, a great era. You know, I was definitely following along when you guys were putting out videos and, I was like, yo, these dudes are doing it, you know, and, and you guys were crushing it. So I definitely appreciated that, that era that you guys put together. Um, yeah. Thanks, man. So being independent, um, have you, I look up to a lot of guys like Mike, um, Nick D, um, Forrest Frank. Like I look up to a lot of these independent artists and I've been seeing a lot of them put out, you know, subscription, subscription platforms. Um, yeah. whether it's on Famigo or whether it's on grouped, um, well, there's a squirrel crawling, some squirrel <laughs> doing some Superman, uh, some Spider-Man stuff right now. Um, he was crawling across the power line, like hanging by his arms, like just like doing, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, like these independent artists, they're putting out, um, they're putting out subscription platforms and they're making a lot of like independent revenue, bro. Like they're making a lot of money. And they're, they're achieving freedom and they're just doing this full time. Um, 
have you thought about putting out like a subscription platform or anything like that? Yeah, I have, bro. I've been wanting to wait for uh, kind of getting a little, a little bit more of a following from like Instagram and TikTok and stuff. Yeah, which I definitely have have started to um, to get there. So that's got to be something I look into. But yeah, I want to make sure I have a solidified fan base and then start going and doing like I want to give people as much value with as much free content and then come in and say, okay, you want more stuff? All right, you know, come come to come to this side. I'll I'll show you the goods. Yeah. But um, yeah, that sounded a little weird the way that came out of my mouth just now. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'll show you the goods. <laughs> sh- yeah, nah, bro. I I uh I'm in the same wave, same mindset. I don't want to. I don't want to seem like I'm just trying to grab cash from people. I want to put out mad value first, grow a fan base, and then monetize. Um, the way to do it. Yeah, bro. Are you are you a full time artist right now? Um, I like yes to no. Um, and the only reason I say yes to no, I, I, I make full time money off of it to be able to pay my like my bills and stuff. But uh, bro, I actually got a part time job at at Disney World right now, man. Um, Ooh, that's I just cool. Want some extra bread, bro? Literally for no other reason than, than man, I just want to, I just want to like get married, bro, and I want to um have some some extra cash just so i could put it away for saving and paying off you know school and stuff like that um but yeah bro that's dope yeah bro me and my girl love disney so might have to pull up on you one day (laughs) yeah yeah Um, Yeah, epcot Epcot, you said yeah 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 we we got We've been wanting to go to Epcot for so long. We just want to eat around the world. We just want to eat something at every little country. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wait, bro. I'm, I like Holly. I'm a Hollywood Studios guy. Okay. Yeah. Me and my parents went there. Um. I'm. I like Animal Kingdom a lot. Yeah. Like just yeah. chilling, watching the girl. I could watch the gorillas for hours. Yeah, dude. So that stuff. Is, they like entire animals. They just. It's it's crazy to see. Yeah. Where'd you go to school for, for college? Uh so I went to Southeastern University. Um oh. yeah, I was I was studying uh ministerial leadership. Um <clears throat> I'm actually going back and and uh and changing. I'm doing business administration. I'll be starting up in a few weeks here actually. Oh cool, um, bro. Cool. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited. Um you know, I I, I I would be the first person in my family graduating college, which Let's is a go. big deal to me. Let's go, bro. I want to uh, show my future uh, kids that. My bad. What would you say? I'm sorry, bro. I was just saying I want to make sure I show my future kids that that's possible, you know. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It is possible. You're going to you're going to crush that, bro. Um I actually dropped out of college. I went to uh, Eastern, Eastern, uh, Eastern Florida State College down here in uh, in Melbourne. I was majoring. Yeah. I was trying to go in for psychology, studying psychology, just because I grew up with all this depression. So I'm like, well, let me just study it so I can heal myself. Um, mm-hmm. but I dropped out after like two months, and I was like, dude, this is not for me. I, I just wanted to make music, and I was going yeah. into crazy debt, and I'm like, what am I doing right now? Like. And then I ended up working at a digital marketing agency for like six, seven years. Um, yeah. So yeah, bro. Like I have a pretty strong background in marketing, um, but I haven't been able to like run paid ads for my own stuff because I just haven't had the time because I'm always working on other people's stuff. So in the near future, I'm going to be ramping up and like running some, some marketing campaigns on my own music, like running ads and stuff like that. I've done it for a few other artists and it's been successful. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Um, I almost was a college dropout on some Kanye stuff, but not some Kanye Uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Bro. If you ever come, if you ever, well, you are coming out to, to Melbourne, but are you are you just coming for the performance or are you, are you staying overnight out here? Yeah, I'm I'll be there just for the day. Um Yeah. I have this like 
Well, so we have sound check at 4 p.m. that day. And then they're doing like the VIP thing, I think at uh, six o'clock or something like that. And then the show starts at seven, I believe. Um, okay. Be wrong on the times, but um, but I'm I'm planning on getting out there like 11 a.m., 12 a.m. And um, okay. spending the day out there, bro. I need like I love finding like the local spots to eat and you know, things like that. So. All right. Let me know if you're trying to link up, bro, because. I'm definitely I'm I'm definitely gonna try to pull up to the concert. Um yeah. but dude, if you wanna if you wanna like grab lunch or something, let me know. Um heck yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be out there with a few people, bro. So um it'll be me, my girlfriend, um, and I might have uh these two uh younger guys that I kind of have been discipling recently. Uh they might come with me. Um and I'm gonna have my video guy. So it'll it'll be a couple of us, man. But um, bro, anywhere that you think is like solid, I'm like, I'm trying to be on my pescatarian wave right now, like just seafood. I haven't been the best at it as of recent. I've been eating some chicken, but um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to lay off the chicken, man, but it's hard. I like I like me some chicken, I like some good chicken. For sure, for sure. If you're looking for like a really good dude, if you're looking for like a really, really good cod sandwich. Go to Meg O'Malley's in downtown Melbourne. Oh, I bet. Meg yeah, O'Malley's downtown Melbourne. Send that to me on Instagram, bro. I got to pull up. Yo, they should probably pay us for this because, you know, we're Sponsor. plugging them. Yeah. <laughs> They're so good, dude. I, I recently had the fried cod sandwich and it, it was so good. I got like coleslaw on it and like, it's so good. Um, Speaking of food, bro, I do this thing called road to 200 pounds. So I'll give you, I'll give you a little insight. So a couple of years ago, I got on this medication and it caused me to gain 150 pounds. So oh, I, wow. I hit, I gained, I, dude, I was up to 400 pounds. And um, since then I've lost about 53 pounds when I've switched medications, yeah. but uh, I'm trying to you, eat bro. healthier. Yeah. Thanks bro. I eliminated fast food, started going to the gym and switched medications and I'm down like 53, 54 pounds. I've been documenting the journey, bro. And one thing I've noticed is like when you document personal stuff like that, people start to root for you and they cheer for you. And it causes like this, like this cohesiveness with your fan base when you share personal things like that, just like you sharing the the pornography joint, you're creating this, like this bond with the people who support you and, and do they just root for you even more. So yeah, bro, from a marketing standpoint and from a health standpoint, and from a God standpoint, like having a healthy body so we can fulfill God's will even better through our vessel. Um, yeah, bro, that, that's just been a huge part of, of what's going on in my life. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, bro. So keep that up, man. That's amazing. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Got to. Um, yeah, bro. And, and then just to kind of wrap things up. Um, how do you how do you balance validation on social versus validation from god because I, i've heard i've heard talking clips of you where you're like you're like saying I, and i'm gonna paraphrase i don't have exact details but like you were saying things along the lines of like you know social media is a highlight reel um yeah yeah you know deleting socials for a while um it's not so important to go on social, but how do you balance that with like also actually wanting to grow on social? Yeah. Um, man, I think it's just, I think it's just maximizing the time that you are on there. Right. Yeah. Um, I wrestled with comparison for, a, for a while and it led me to trying to do the most to make content, you know? Um, and that like comparison trap I fell in completely you know um and it would lead me to be so discouraged bro looking at other people and all the success that they had but you know I, I had I had to find what what worked for me and what worked um for the lifestyle that I want to live right and so if I um my my like kind of vibe right now is every couple of months I'm gonna take a month off bro like whether that be once or twice a year, I'm literally just going to take a month off. Um, like the world is so much bigger than social media. And as much as, you know, these social media influencers want to push 
or preach consistency, the world's not going to forget about you if you're gone for a month. It's not that big of a deal, bro. You like you'll give you back in a month, and they'll be like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" Yeah. Um, so there's that, and then just on a weekly basis, on a small scale, I don't I don't touch socials on Sundays. Um, I like being just present with my girlfriend and my friends, bro. And and I wasn't always like that. Like I used to just obsess over that stuff, bro. But um, it's not good for my mental health, man. And I'd rather be strong mentally than to be some slave to the algorithm, you know. Um, Let's go, bro. So, yeah, man, that's that's kind of what worked for me. I know it, I know it works different for everybody else. I think that's a really good process, though, for for me personally, and it's been um, it's been working a lot. So. Oh man, I'm I'm glad that you don't touch it on Sundays. I think I think I might uh, I might pick up that habit too, bro. So yeah, man, bro, yeah, it's it's great, man. It works wonders. Just it and especially if you go to church on Sundays, man. Like how it, and this is just a, a personal thought, man. Really quick, like I don't want to get so comfortable with just hearing a message that my pastor probably spent weeks preparing. You know, and then as soon as I leave, I just forget about all of that because I go on social media and just check whatever's going on. And you ask me two hours later, oh, you know, so what'd you think about the sermon? Uh, uh, um, uh, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, it was good. It was a good sermon. Oh, what's your favorite part? Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I uh, have the brain space to actually digest you know what was what was just fed to me man so yeah bro amen bro amen that was uh yeah i think i think we had a solid it's been, it's been about an hour i think we had a oh wow that flew by right i'll be flying yeah dang yeah. it has been like an hour. yeah 3 30 that's been it, it's been real bro um yeah bro i think we should we should do this again sometime man yeah bro i'm with it man um i'm gonna i'm gonna get you some clips try to get you some clips of like some cool moments that you said so you can yeah. have some clips for your social oh i love that bro we got to um, do some collab posts too yeah i would love to man and yeah. dude even musically like maybe something down the road we can uh we can make something happen yeah bro i'm with it man yeah man well i appreciate you dog and um w can you just tell me one more time when you're coming to melbourne August 13th. It'll be next Sunday. So not August. this upcoming, but next Sunday. August 13th. Okay, Melbourne. Just wrote that down. I'll, yeah, I'm definitely going to do my best to pull up to that. Um, And yeah, bro, shake your hand yes. in person and just kind of, you know, get to get to meet you. But yeah, bro, I really appreciate you. you jumping on the podcast. And yeah, man, thank you. Yes, sir. Anytime. All right, brother. You take it easy, man. All right, man. Peace.